Hello. Could people uh, sit down? That would be great. Be really great. Well, good morning. Welcome. We're glad to have you out here. And I'm just going to make a couple opening remarks. The uh, biggest thing I want to just say is we have a great deal of momentum here at Christ Church, and we are so blessed. We've got great uh, staff. We've got great lay leadership. We've got phenomenal parishioners. We are truly, truly blessed. We have a lot of young families who've been joining us, and that's been spectacular. If you haven't come to Messy Church at 9 o'clock in this room, come see it. There were just 50 here today, but normally it's 80 to 100, and it's just a buzz of activity, and we've got the right formula that's attracting a lot of families with young children. Our preschool is thriving. We have about 106 students in there. Um, one of the key things is that we have a beautiful relationship established between the church and the preschool. And as a result, a lot of those families are coming in to join us at Christ Church. It's delightful to see them and just to do things in ministry together. Before the pandemic, our average Sunday attendance was 276, which is a good number. Um, very few churches have reached their average Sunday attendance after the pandemic. They're still tr struggling to get back to what they had in terms of worship numbers on a Sunday pre-pandemic. We, by good fortune and lots of hard work by a lot of folks and um, just by the grace of God, we are now well over our average Sunday attendance pre-pandemic. Um, we are getting close to 500 on some Sundays here uh, as a Sunday attendance. When you look at the 8, 9, 11, and then if we have a 5 o'clock Compline or Coral Evensong. And that's not including those who join us via live stream. So that's, our reach has brought in considerably. Some of the keys were reopening early. We, did, we were, I believe, the first Episcopal Church to reopen. If you lose your momentum, you put yourself in peril. We did everything to avoid that. Then starting Messy Church, which started with 15 or 20 uh, parents and children, and now averages about 80 or more. In September, we hope to offer a new contemporary evening service on Sundays, 5 o'clock, 5.36. We haven't picked the exact time yet, um, but we believe that's a great investment for us to make. We'll have to invest in more music. We'll have to invest in supporting that service. You just don't open the doors and hope everything will go well. Um, but we have all the tools on staff now to make that happen, and we're really excited about that. We know that 27% of the American population has a work conflict with Sunday morning, so we want to be able to welcome our own members who can't make it on Sunday morning and also others beyond and offer a different style of worship and music to attract them. Our children's chapel is thriving. You'll see, you know, on an average Sunday, we have about 35 or 40 children in it. Um, Susie McNiff does a splendid job along with Tom Ahrens who's uh, in music there and now Anna Linebeck. And Tom said the other day they s spent their time down in Florida he, where when he's in their children's chapel, they're five children. He said there's such a difference to be here with 35 or 40 children out every Sunday. It makes all the difference. Josh Barden, our director of youth ministry, is reaching directly about 40 of our teenagers um, now. And that program is in really good shape, and it's going to continue to grow with each passing month. Josh joins Susie McNiff and now Tim Hamlin, our new deacon, to lead the confirmation class. And they're doing a spectacular job. Jamie and Johnny have recruited lots more choristers and singers. Our um, Christchurch Singers has over 30 members now. The choristers are at the best numbers we've had in, in five or six years, thanks to all the recruiting they've been doing over the past uh, six months. Cheryl is hitting a grand slam with women's ministries. She just returned from leading the women's retreat. She said it was sensational. I hear that after every woman's retreat. And her ministry and the woman uh, working with her, Lucy Rinaldi and others, have done a phenomenal job. Ron Romaniello is helping the men to do the same for our men's ministry, assisted by other folks as well. And we have 
a new program called the Sons of Christ in Community, where we have 60 folks meeting in the parish chapel on Monday nights for 10 Mondays in a row. And then they break out into six small groups. We could have more people, but we don't have more meeting space. So we're limited by what we can do. But we have 60 in this new class that is all about building disciples and creating Christian community. And Bobby Eggers and Lyle Gastel are the two best marketers in the Episcopal Church. They do a great job of communicating, and as a result, almost every effort that we launch has a great chance of success. Dr. Tom Riles, Linda Gallo, and Josh Barton are helping to anchor outreach. We're re-envisioning um, outreach ministries, that is the service to others beyond our church, in new ways, and we look forward to sharing that with you. And our hope is to have everyone at Christ Church find a hands-on ministry where they can serve and give back to others. And a hands-on ministry here in the church where they can give back to our community. Moving forward, we hope to grow our stewardship to be able to match what we sense is God's call to us to touch and impact many, many lives. And now I turn it over to our incredible wardens. We're phenomenally blessed to have Lucy Rinaldi as our senior warden and Dominic Casserly as our junior warden, two of the finest wardens I've ever had a chance to work with. And they are, I think, a great reason why Christ Church is growing so much. Good morning. Um, as Marek said, I'm Lucy Rinaldi and Dominic Cassley, and we are uh, your, your wardens here. Um, you're actually here under false pretenses because um, normally on a forum, other people have done the work. Um, you're going to work for us this morning. Um, so the way we're going to go through, um, we're here to talk about the future of Christchurch. Today's celebration Sunday. Uh, you're going to hear all about the annual appeal as things come through your mailbox, as you start to get in, um, emails from people um, asking you to pledge for next year. And for 2023, if you have anything left over at the end of the year, we do still have a shortfall. We do still need to make that up. Um, but, we, but today, what we want to talk about is the future. And we've been doing um, uh, some work on that, and we need your help on... Uh, continuing that work and and we're just at the beginning of the pro process so what we want to talk about today is we're going to take you very briefly through some ideas that have started to come up in our initial conversations um, we're going to talk about how we think about missions and our buildings and we're thinking about tying those two together then you're going to do the work at your tables. We want everybody to assign a scribe at your table and to start discussing amongst yourselves what you would like here, where you would like our focus to be as a church. And then we have a voting system for you. Um, you everybody over the age of 18 who's a member here should have four orange dots and three green dots, and we will explain to you when we get to that how that's going to work. But you have scarce resources, and we're asking you to let us know where you would like our focus to be. Uh, so that's the basic process that we're going to get to. So just to reiterate, um, what, where have we come from? We've been thinking about uh, what we're doing. Uh, you know, you've all know, you've heard Marek this morning, you've all seen it with your own eyes, you've participated in the services and the programs. This church is amazing, and it's growing, which is really unusual. We don't want to stop that momentum, and I hope you don't either. But we have to think as we go, how do we evolve? Where do we go? We've, we've put some money into different missions uh, with staff. We have to think about our buildings. We've, used, we've talked to the clergy, the staff, the vestry, some uh, members of the congregation. Um, and w as we assessed our buildings, the state that they're in and what will need um, to be done, uh, we've also had some advice from a, from a professional architect as well as others who've generously offered their time and help. We need your input on these, these ideas. So, um, as Marek has laid out, this is an amazing place. We've been around for 275 years next year. We're going to be celebrating that. There are lots of events being planned. And we've evolved, and the church has changed over the years. We need to continue to do that while keeping our great traditions. We don't want to lose anything which we all believe is worthwhile. And our belief is that we need to in continue to invest in those missions and the buildings that support them. So we've been thinking about this in terms of what do our, what do our buildings serve? Do we have enough meeting rooms? Do, our, do we have offices? Our, our staff are 
uh, actually our part-time staff are coming in with laptops and finding a place to perch. Um, if people come in for meetings, it's very hard to find a meeting room. We don't have internal conference rooms. The ones that used to exist have been converted into small cupboard-like offices. Um, we need to think about our children, family, and youth. So we've been thinking about it in terms of our missions and how the buildings serve those. Um, we've been thinking our recent investment um, in missions, as I said, has come from Vision 2025 and our supporters there, where we raised some money to staff that. That was focused around making sure that our worship and our liturgy and music did not suffer at all, that we continued our great traditions there. And as you know, and as you've heard again repeated, we have many, many new programs devoted to the specific needs of the community. So families, youth, spiritual formation, women and men's Bible studies, community groups, outreach. We don't have pastoral care up there, but that group has been growing as well under the overall um, umbrella of loving our neighbor um, and gatherings. So building community, um, inviting everybody in. Um, and of course, we've invested in communication so everybody knows what's going on. Um, seasons you all know about and we've got an amazing marketing and communications team. So, seven mission areas which are up here but also on, on the screen. Um, that we've identified are existing traditional worship and music, the possibility of a contemporary service, youth programs, children and families, including Messy Church. For those of you who haven't seen the emails, we've actually made the decision right now to go from two Sundays a month of Messy Church to every Sunday of Messy Church. And, and, that, and that we were, had to take a, a leap of faith because we thought, well, we were getting 80 to 90 people. Could we go down to 45 every week as people spread out? And it has continued with great strength so far. Um, adult spiritual formation, um, outreach programs, and again, I put pastoral care under that, and engagement gatherings and events. And that creates what we hope is a big tent. Um, and I, the other thing, once we've done the voting, I also want to urge you, if you have other ideas and you think we're missing something really obvious, um, Discuss it at your tables, but you can also email Dominic and me afterwards and let us know. We're, we're open to thoughts and ideas. So, I think we can go through these quickly. Um, as I said, the traditional worship and music, the contemporary service, youth, I think we've discussed those, Dominic. And again, these as well. These are areas. So, Dominic is going to talk to you about the state of our buildings. Lucky Dominic. <coughs> so... The second part of what we want to talk about is what we need to do about our buildings to support all the missionary activity that Lucy just went through. Um, so our buildings, uh, we do have a wonderful campus. We have eight buildings we look after. Um, um, but we also have some less loved buildings. I would include this as being one of them. Um, I describe it as, as our nod to, Soviet, to the Soviet era. Uh, uh, um, uh, but actually, it's a very inflexible space, this space. If we want to have a meeting of 50 people, it doesn't work very well because it's just so big. Um, <clears throat> um, there is nowhere to welcome parishioners. You walk into a corridor to uh, come into this church, as you, as you know. That's where the way most people enter. Um, and we have in inefficient space and inefficient space for uh, our programs. In fact, back in 2005, there was a major review of all the property here, huge review. And it said the most egregious problems stem from an acute shortage of space, which Lucy talked about, and the inefficient dispersal of programs throughout the building. So if you're doing the youth program, it's, it's all over the place. The children, children's program, all over the place. There are no real centers of focus. Next, Lucy. Um, we also have aged buildings. They leak, I'm afraid. Um, they, let, they let cold air in. Um, they're just not very uh, watertight. Um, and that's really because many years of delayed maintenance, which we're trying to catch up on. Uh, here's a shocking fact for you. Our annual budget for our buildings is $375,000 a year, and we always overspend. Right? 
Um, and we overspend because we're catching up with stuff we haven't dealt with over the years. Uh, our communications infrastructure is outdated, right? It's hardly a digital campus we have today. Um, and the fact is, these problems aren't new. They've just become more glaring as, frankly, we've grown the church and stressed and used the buildings more. It's become clearer some of the problems we have. Okay, so we have some ideas. And let me emphasize these are ideas that we're going to go through a process this afternoon to start the process of getting your input, right? So just these are ideas, not decisions, just ideas. And the main sanctuary is actually, thankfully, in pretty good shape. As you know, we invested in that, the new organ, etc. The chapel looks fine, but in fact, it was built in 1957, as was this, by the way. Um, and um, the chapel's window, that big glass window, is getting definitely to the end of its life. So we're going to, it's, it's not watertight, so we're going to have to replace it. Now, there's probably an opportunity because we can think about do we want to replace it exactly as is or do we want to think about it a bit differently? But, but we need to replace it. Um, the music program is spread all over, below, sideways, up, down, wherever. Um, we have an opportunity, we think, to create a center for music, which would be to take the parish house, which you know is in the middle of the semicircle, Right? and turn that into a center for music, dedicated to our music programs, which would move a lot of, create a lot of space here. We move a lot of things out of this space. Um, however, to do that, we need to have air, add air conditioning, and we need to make it ADD compliant, which means you have to have a lift, and actually the, the level in front of it needs to be flattened. There are too many stairs to, in and out, right? Um, but we think that's a major opportunity. We think we have a really interesting chance to, to turn this into a center for uh, engagement, community, and outreach. What would that involve? And in a second, I'm going to show you some pictures, which you're all going to scream at, but bear with me. Um, effectively, what we would do is um, create over a little bit of the space over there where the clock is, we would push out and create some meeting rooms. A second floor, but only for a little space, not across the whole thing, just for a little space, because we don't have enough meeting rooms. Um, we would um, redecorate this whole thing, bring it up to speed uh, to today, um, and we think we have an opportunity to enclose the patio out here in front of the corridor, so you suddenly create a much bigger entrance into the whole space, and that would actually be useful gathering space as well. Right? So the little patio in front of the corridor we would probably enclose. And we do think this would create a huge amount of new space for the parish uh, and make lots of our missions much more effective because they'd be able to meet in usable space. Okay, this is going to tiny drawings, but basically this is where we are today. And this little thing here is the extra meeting space we're talking about over there where the clock is just sticking out a little bit. Um, this is the enclosed um, uh, patio, and this is the new music building over here. This is the parish house, which is be turned into the music center. Now I'm going to show you, this is what one image of what this could, be, could become, uh, this space. The things to take away from this drawing, um, which no one will like, um, or we'll have comments on, is, uh, for instance, replacing a linoleum floor with a manufactured wood, hard, which lasts a long, long time, wood floor, right? Much nicer to be in, much more useful, etc. To change the windows or the covering of the windows to create a, a softer but more interesting light. Uh, probably where Lucy is now sitting to create a huge uh, screen for presentations like this, much, much bigger than what you're all having to stare at now. At the far end, another projection screen for uh, big, big meetings if we want to have an absolutely enormous uh, screen. Uh, and just basically make it a much more attractive space for people to come into. Uh, still, hopefully, when this is, kitchen is eventually opened, uh, having an ability to actually serve food on an ongoing basis. Um, I told you that our 
children, families, and youth programs are spread all over the campus. The annex, which is the building in the cloisters, in the cloister space, again, just one over from the parish house, um, we think could become the children, families, and youth ministry center. So all our activity to do with children and youth would again be in one space as opposed to being dispersed all over the place. Uh, we need to do some work on that building to make it weatherproof, frankly, um, and then repurpose the interior a bit. Actually, the repurposing is not a huge amount of work, but it has to be repurposed for uh, uh, children, families, and youth. And the last two on this list, the Thomas Higgins House, uh, we all love. Um, uh, it needs some work. It's a very historic building, so we need to make sure it, is, uh, it has some exterior challenges that we need to work on, some external and internal works. Um, and finally, in everything we're doing, every building we touch, we have a problem that this is a long, long way away from being a green campus. We have very old boilers. We do not have much insulation. Um, our energy bills are embarrassing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Poor Jack, our poor man, is managing this every day. And we would like, in the, I hope everyone's met Jack. Just wave, Jack. Jack Cavanella. Um, so we would like to be able to give Jack um, an up-to-date info. So every time we touch a building, everything I've just talked about, we need to make sure it's insulated properly, it has boilers which you know, are efficient, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So as we go through this program, and we will get payback on that. Our energy bills will come down, and over time we'll get that money back. Right, so what we would like you to do now, you've just heard us talk about missions, uh, and we have them up there um, <coughs> on, on here, the missions that um, Lucy talked about, and you've heard me talk about buildings. And we'd just like you at your tables, first of all, to appoint someone to be scribe. You've got a piece of paper and a pen, so one of you has to be scribe. And just give us your reactions. Just whatever you thought, different ideas, whatever it is. We'll do that for a few minutes, and then we're going to go to voting. Okay?
Okay. It is time to vote. Time to vote. It's time to vote. So let me try and explain how this works. You see the piece of paper up on the uh, board there. It has the ideas you heard Lucy and I talk about, right? Um, we would like you to use your green dots against the buildings. You will notice you only have three. So you have to choose, right? And then the orange dots against the missions, and you only have four. So you have to choose, right? Two points. Anybody who hasn't got any, three points. 
Anybody who hasn't got any dots, I haven't got them, just wave your hand and we'll get you some. Secondly, those who'd like to cheat and get a second set of dots, <laughs> Marek would like to talk to you afterwards. Um, and third, if you want to put all your dots against one thing, right, you're allowed to do that, right? So, you, you know, you make your choice. If you said the only thing that matters to me is, and you, can put, you put all your dots against, that's fine. You're allowed to do that. Right, so now I think if we all get up and just stick your dots on, that would be great. And we will collect the pieces of paper from all the meetings. Thank you for all your work. What? And I, I just want to say that, that this will not disappear entirely into the ether. We will collect notes and we, we will try and provide some feedback for everybody so that you know uh, how you've all been thinking as a group. <laughs>